The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the March 29th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of your future versus prisoners of your past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. You can send me an email, steve at tfn.com, and inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show kick-started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading down 55 points at 20,646. S&P is flat, trading at 2358. NDX 100 up 11 points. A composite up 11. The Russell is up two points. Semis are down four. New York Stock Exchange off nine. Wilshire is up five. Transports are down four tenths of a percent. So they're the leader to the downside, right behind the uh, semiconductors out here. Gold is off three bucks. Silver's down two pennies. Light speed crude is the big winner. That's up two percent. Up 97 cents, uh, 49.34 looks like the bottom is in for light, sweet, crude. Lead the charge here, dollar wise, the upside. You got Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Regenerate Pharmaceuticals. They're up 20 and 16 dollars, respectively. Amazon up 13 dollars, one and six tenths percent. Chipotle up nine. Google's up uh, seven to the downside. F5 Networks down four percent. On 863,000 shares, that's off six bucks. Netties down five bucks. Tesoro down 450. Biogen off four. Toyota Motor Company down a couple of percent or 220. But where do we begin? I think the best place to begin, the place that I like to begin, and I've been gone from my computer screens all morning, so I'm actually just going to go through the process that uh, I would just normally go through to get a check on the market. So this is how Stevie would actually do it. For me, the most important message is, and where I like to begin my day always, is just understanding where are we on the what we'll call the intermediate term time frame picture of the daily equity futures contracts? I believe that the you don't have to trade the equity futures contracts, but you must get access to them if you want to be a pattern recognition expert. Because the ETF structures, the spies, the diamonds, the IW, they're all nice, but they're not going to provide you the type of information that we can glean here as we dig down. So, for example, we're taking a look at this beautiful four-panel chart. We've got the ES Mini in the upper left. We've got the NASDAQ in the upper right. We've got the Dow lower left. We've got the Russell 2000 in the lower right. Now, if we take a look at the ES Mini, now the Russell 2000, by the way, you've got a 10-minute delay on that. So your numbers, if you are following us, following along with us at home, it could be off slightly. If we take a look at the ES Mini, here's what we know. Brand new TAS market profile that formed today. Now, this profile is actually a bullish bias profile. Let's, let me blow this up on the screen. When I say blow it up, you know what I mean. I'm talking technically speaking out here. But let's go ahead and turn off the uh, weekly profiles. Uh, not that they're not important. They are. Oh, that would have been an easier way to do that. That's right. I did this. I made this one slight adjustment out here. So there we go. So the weeklies are up. That way I could just do with one click of a button. Uh, I, I could do this. So we now the reason that I said that this is a bullish bias 
price area, by the way, that price area being 23350 dollars we'll call at the bottom, 23 dollars up at the top. The reason why this is a bullish buy structure is because that point of control, that center of the box, 2337, is closer to the bottom of the box. Price has run right up into resistance. So if the markets are going to move up, if the S&P 500 is going to move higher, it needs to be able to bust through this level. Right now, well, we know it's up against resistance. It is a profile that even though it has a bullish structure, it formed below the prior daily profile. So we're seeing an intermediate term change in trend. However, that doesn't mean anything until you bust below the current profile low of 23.30.65. For those of you that are active traders that are looking to short the ES Mini, this message here is now's the time with a tight stop. You're right up against resistance. Where could price head to? Not out of the question to get back and test 23.37. If it breaks 23.35, where is it headed to? Well, then we go ahead. We put the weeklies back on our screen out here. And the weekly say 23.97. Now, I did not initiate for you a short trade in the ES Mini. It just was giving, if those of you that were aggressive, this would be the time now for you to be taking a look at that. You'd want to have some other confirming indicators. Now, if you are the believer that it is not necessarily the ES Mini that is rocking your world or the world of the stock market, then you might go and say, well, who is rocking the cabal? Something like that, right? And that would be most likely you would say, hey, it's the NASDAQ, steve -O. So if we go take a look at the NQ, so we know that the ES is up against support. If we take a look at the NQ, let's turn the weekly off here. We're going to see that both the weekly and the daily top of the box is at the same price point, 54.41. See, now the weekly is on. It hides because this uh, green goes over the weekly. It hides that level. So here's what we know about the NQ. It too has a, well, it not too, but it has a bearish structured daily profile. Why? Because that center of the box, which formed on Monday, is closer to the top of the box. But you're trading above that center line. This says to you and I, the NQ, and I'm not saying at 115, it's 113 right now, really should go tag that 5441 level. Maybe at 5441, depending on where the ES is trading, maybe it's just going to continue to trade sideways. That might be your more ideal spot to consider taking a short. That's if you are inclined to do so. Again, I'm not initiating an order out here for you to do that. Uh, but the NQ, there's nothing that you and I are looking at here to suggest that it shouldn't at least move up to that 54.41 level. That's another 21 points out here. Now, let's go take a look at one of the bottom two out here. The Dow, sorry, I'm still not really suffering from this nasty cold. Let me tell you, when I talk about nasty colds, holy cow. <coughs> Still have a little bit of the cough. Very dry out here, but I'm getting back into a shape, so to speak. Now, the Dow and the Russell 2000. Let's go to the chart that I think is actually perhaps the most important of all of these out here. And that, believe it or not, is the Russell 2000. And here's the reason that I say that and really trying to get a gauge because from weakness, which this has been weak, we shall find strength out here. When we take a look at the Russell 2000, the reason why I say this is perhaps the most important chart is the following. I've turned the weekly profiles off. And on Monday, a brand new Taz Daily Box formed. Take a look at where price was when this formed. Is that bullish or bearish? Let's go answer that magical question. We'll get back from this breakout here. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Look great. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 Welcome back, folks. So we're looking at the Russell 2000, uh, the daily time frame chart. But, of course, you can see no price date out here because the question that I had posed to you, for those of you that are watching us on Tiger TV, is we know that there was a brand new market profile that formed on Monday. Those are the blue horizontal lines on my screen out here. The current ones, the ones over on the right-hand side. And the question was, when this profile formed, was it bullish or bearish? And the answer is actually both. Now, here's the bearish side of it when it actually formed. So when it first formed, it truly had a bearish message out here. And the reason is, is because when this formed, price was below the bottom of the box out there. It does not, you do not see that too often. When you do see it, it is a real sign or a potential sign of a very, from a profile standpoint, a very bearish signal out here. It also says that on any bounce, the bottom of that box ought to hold. The bottom of the box, by the way, is 1368.82. Right now, on a 10-minute delay, we're trading at 1369.10. If price closes today inside that market profile, will then it be bullish or bearish? Because, you know, there is nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern out here. Now, here's the reason also why I said it could be both. The reason is, is because when this profile formed, it actually formed above the prior daily profile that out there when it when it when it uh, forms at levels higher out here that's a bullish message so i have not seen enough of these types of profiles form like this to be able to give you any conclusive information i would like to go out there and test it and we'll probably just bring it to uh, john logan's attention to see if we can somehow back test that um, because it is a, a unique situation out here. But here is what we do know, or what I believe we do know out here, is we put on price and we go ahead and we put on the weekly profile as well. If, in fact, the Russell 2000 today closes above 1393.50, the weak link in the market is saying that it wants to go higher out here. 
Can't guarantee it. By the way, the structure of this box out here is uh, is a neutral, right? The center of the box is truly basically in the center of the box out here. So what it would say to us, if you're trying to, or if you are trading the uh, TF, the Russell 2000, close above 1393 suggests getting up to the 1381 level. Now this fits right into, we talk about how things happen for us. This fits right into a question that came uh, in the uh, den from Morton. Morton asked the question, Steve, do you use oscillators along with these charts to determine where to buy and sell? So let's go figure out. And uh, the request was to look at it on a daily and a two-hour time frame chart. So let's take a look at the uh, daily chart. And here we can go ahead and take a look at the price oscillator. Price oscillator is the bottom portion of my screen. You know how I make such a big deal about is that price oscillator above or below the zero line? Bottom panel is what we're looking at. You see that red horizontal line, which is the zero line. And when price is or when the oscillator is above that, by the way, the oscillator is no more than the difference between the 19 and the 39-day exponential moving averages out there. That's what it's measuring. And when the price oscillator is above zero and rising, it doesn't get much more bullish than that. Now, you're not going to be able to use this set of tools to identify the top tick or the bottom tick out there. So you cannot use oscillators for that, Morton, but you certainly can use them to uh, signal which side of the market that you should be on. And using that in combination with those TAS market profiles is really a beautiful thing out here. Now, what typically happens, and I'm going to take us back into the time frame here in October 2016. You see, if we take a look at the upper lines on my chart out here, you'll see three lines. When those three lines converge, we also happen to have the price oscillator getting right to that zero level. It's really important because that is just like the cliff. Are you going to fall off the cliff? Is it support? Is it resistance? What are you going to do? It's do or die is the uh, is the time that you are at out here. So if we look at on the trading days of, for example, October 13th, October 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, see how these three lines are coming together just as you're getting down to zero and price was already below that. What typically happens when you get to that zero level is the market will go ahead and pause. You can does it happen all the time? No. In real trending markets, and that's the cool thing, in real trending markets, the price will not give a, a hoot. But in other markets, most, most of the time, when I say most, I'm not talking like a coin flip most. I'm talking like most of the time you will see a pause in price. And you typically will see price come back into Stevie's red line. And when you get a test and a rejection – depending on which side of the trade you are on, is giving you key information. Take a look at what happens back here in October. Price gets up. It tests it, tests it back on October 24th, rejects it on October 25th. There, Morton, this is how you could use the price oscillator or how you could certainly, and, and you could just be paying attention. you got to really have Stevie's red line out there, that oscillator unchanged line. But here's how you could go ahead and utilize these oscillators to go ahead and enter a trade because that was the signal, okay, we should go ahead and take a short trade, not a long trade. That is most certain because you now had a falling price oscillator below zero. Now, we take a look at the bond that formed out here during the election time period, November the 9th out here. We can see that we got into that zero level right around November the 14th. And price just kept on going, never came back. Got to a TD uh, set up nine count out here. It didn't care. It just kept on going and going out here. In fact, the top of the Russell 2000 from a daily perspective happened to be wave number seven. That is to be expected, right? We know that. But the reason that it's so important for Morton and I to take a look at this with regard to the Russell 2000 out here is because... Well, here let's take a look at let's take a look at this situation that we're in. It was on March 22nd when we saw <coughs> the price oscillator hit that zero line. Right when we see the convergence of Stevie's three lines out there, and <coughs> did price pause? And the answer is yes. How often does it pause like that? The majority of the time. Now, that doesn't mean you exit the trade or you reverse the trade or something along those lines, but you should anticipate and expect a pause. <coughs> Typically, 
You want to see price come up and test Stevie's red line. What did it do yesterday? It tested Stevie's red line. Right now, we're not really interested in the other lines out there. In fact, we're so uninterested in those, just so I can go ahead and uh, make sure you, you're following along with me and not getting confused by any lines out there. We'll just put Stevie's red line on my chart as we speak right now. Here's the problem. This should have been resistance. Now, I don't know how this contract, I don't know how the markets are going to close today. But Morton. If we see a rejection of this area, meaning it closed back below 1365, it's no different than the time period that we looked at before. And this would say that the, that the Russell 2000 wants to trade lower. But by taking out a significant level of resistance, we're not above the zero line out here as we speak. But the daily is suggesting to us that it wants to move to higher ground with any close above 1365.40. Now, you also mentioned the two-hour chart out here. So let's go take a look at that as a time frame. So I would say between the profiles that we're looking at, there is really no need to get into a trade right now. You're waiting for information. You're paying for information out here, good information, by the way. If we look at the chart here for the two-hour time frame, we can see that right here at about 11, 12 o'clock, this is uh, yesterday, we go ahead and we get right to that zero line. Price uh, pauses two candles later. So two hours later, starts to move sideways. What happens? Price comes back. Test EV's red line, and this has moved to the upside. The two-hour chart is saying it wants higher price as well inside the Russell 2000. I hope that answers your question. But from the weak link out here, it suggested the markets want to go higher, at least the NQ, to go tag its daily profile. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, Steve-O in the uh, control room. I accidentally shut down the uh, den, and I was able to get I hit the wrong button there, and I got it back up. So I don't know if you're going to need to refresh the chart so that the uh, folks on Tiger TV and inside the den are actually seeing the charts live here. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention quickly. Uh, so the Dow's off 42 points. S&P is up a point out here. And, okay, so we're good. Hey, P, I, I meant to, I, as I was doing stupid things out here, you had mentioned something about quarterly charts. And do you use quarterly charts? Um, uh, it, it, so we have a dinner that just mentioned, uh, and I didn't really see the question other than just put something in about a quarterly chart. I said, hey, that'd be cool. We should go take a look at quarterly charts. I think it was of the uh, NASDAQ. And uh, so if we do, because the quarter does come to an end on Friday, right? We got March 31st out here. But if we do take a look at the, and, and it doesn't really matter what time frame it is that you use um, for your charting applications, it's going to give you the same type of information out here, you know, tops, bottoms, things of that sort. Uh, and if we do take a look at the NASDAQ composite, you can see it's been one heck of a quarter. Uh, so uh, thanks for pointing that out, the NASDAQ composite, one heck of a quarter. There is nothing inside the NASDAQ composite that from a quarterly standpoint, so we'll call it long-term standpoint, that looks bearish. If price is moving higher, doing less relative energy, but not until on a quarterly basis some type of bearish reversal signal were to form. Would that be a signal of some type of impending problem? Uh, and it would have to get below Stevie's red line at a minimum, 52.84.19, before there would be any kind of a uh, problem out here. Now, that's on the NASDAQ composite. Uh, if we look at the S&P 500, uh, just out of curiosity, or many curiosities out here, let's uh, go ahead and give this an opportunity to load. So if we look at the S&P 500, actually on a quarterly basis, this looks pretty positive as well out here. Uh, now, what it formed last month, I believe the NASDAQ composite did it well, was what's referred to as a TD combo count. You'll see kind of a, a red 13 last month. Those can often be signs of a top, and when they're taken out, uh, it actually is a uh, very huge uh, bullish message. Again, that momentum thing that continues out here. Not until you get below, close below 2187 is there a problem inside the S&P 500. Let's go as long as we're here, take a look at the quarterly stuff, and I didn't see any requests inside my phone or even inside the uh, den out here. Um, let's look at, what do we want to look at? Let's look at the Dow uh, and the Russell. Hey, we were talking about the Russell 2000. For goodness sakes, let's go take a look. What's Russell 2000 done for the last quarter? Hey, kind of little spinning top type of candle out here. It still is positive for the quarter as we speak. Uh, price has been moving higher. Doing less relative energy out here. 1285 is the number before there's any problem. You're at 1370, so 90 points or so to the downside. So on a quarterly basis, this looks pretty good. If we just take a look at where we're at in wave counts out here, only in wave number five. Maybe it's not even wave number five. Maybe it's only wave number one out there. A, so that's the Russell. So uh, what looks horrible? inside the market out here is it the is it the transports let's go check out the transports out here see what they've done for the uh, quarter um so here we've got a little doji candle as we speak so on january 2nd or whenever trading began <coughs> the price of the uh, dow jones transports was 9066 basically and we're trading at 9066. Now, is a doji a reversal candle? Absolutely, positively not. However, up at resistance, which it is at this stage, it can send a signal. Now, that signal won't really come until next month. Of course, the, the transport could not form a doji, right, through Friday. We don't know. But the transports don't really get into a problem territory, again, on a quarterly basis. Quarterly basis, how do you like that uh, change in tone in the uh, Larnix there? Until uh, you get below 86.75.34. So the transports look pretty good on a quarterly basis. We know the NDX is going to look good. Um, how about the, uh, the Wilshire 5000? Something's liable to go wrong with the data here. Uh, semiconductors. Let's go take a look at the uh, semiconductors out here and see what they're doing. Uh, it's always good to get a long-term view. So the semis formed a quarterly TD sequential count last month. Those can be, in fact, uh, uh, when they are confirmed. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Z, because you are the one that is the, uh, the Tom DeMarc uh, aficionado out here, or otherwise known as the expert inside our Tigerston. If we were to get a confirmation 
of a top using the TD sequential. It's only at a confirmation that then they have an 85. Is that the 85 percent uh, rule out there? It's not when they form they work 85 percent of the time, is it? I'm not sure which one of those it is. Maybe maybe we'll get some uh, clarity here. But what I can tell you is it did form a uh, a significant. Uh, um, Tom to Mark count that at this stage of the game, price just continued to move higher. Really wouldn't be a problem until you got to 776.82. In the semis, the market is not going to get crushed and move to the downside. Look, forget about all of the actual stimulus from tax reform and and uh, trillions of dollars are going to get reparked back over here in the U.S. And I mean, just when we take a look at charts like these, it just is a continuous uh, um, uh, confirmation, punctuation point that the markets, the stock markets are going to continue to move higher out here. And I think in a uh, rather large way. Short term, you know, whole different story out here. But that is the story of the quarterly charts out here. It looks like a pretty good first quarter for the stock markets, with the exception being the Dow Transports. Now, I know somebody out here probably is saying, hey, can you get to gold already? And so the answer is, yeah, of course we can. Let's start off by taking a look at the GDX, because certainly there's questions about that out there. What's the GDX doing? Right now, it's up at $23 out here. Yesterday was a test and a rejection, by the way. Let's get to volume out here. Let's uh, turn that on. Uh, of of the top of the Taz daily profile and with light volume, I believe uh, volume is say 61 million shares versus 150 million shares, what is, which it was going into from March the 15th. Uh, even at lighter volume, uh, just by about 10 uh, percent, which qualifies uh, of the March 23rd candle session, which had 67 million. So 67. Well, I take that back. It was moving back with 74 million yesterday. Nonetheless. I still believe right now we're just stuck inside a trading range out here. So that means, and you know what that means, right? That means no triples, no triple lindies. You cannot trade the triples. Stevie takes that off the table. You just don't want to do that, or you really got to be doing a really intraday-ish out here. But uh, other than really intraday-ish, you don't want because you're just going to get chopped away out here. Because this is in a bit of a consolidation between 2256 and 2361 out here. You need to see a make or break of one of those levels. One being the top, the 2361 level, the weekly TAS profile, point of control, the center of the box, and the top of the daily box at 2256. So don't do it. Don't do it out there. I urge you not to do it. So where is, uh, so what, when is there a problem with the GDX? And that's an excellent question. Let's see if we can try to go answer that question. Let's just come back here. Voila. Let's actually put in the GDX. But let's change it from a quarterly chart out here. Yeah, because that quarterly doesn't like that. So let's get that uh, from a quarter. Oh, I got to do it this way. Is that is that what I got to do? Is that what I got to do? How do you like that kind of language out here? But let's go ahead and put this back on a, a daily time frame out here, the GDX. And let's go see where that old price. Oh, well, look, those candles look pretty nasty. I'm going to clean up this chart while we are at this break. And we're going to come back. We're going to answer the question. Hey, what's the GDX doing? Where is it headed to? Where is there a big problem? And anything else that you'd like Steve Rose with TFN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's off 42. S&P is up two points. We're going to go to Dunedin, Florida, and speak with uh, Don. Don, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Thanks for your email on Weatherford International. Now, share with our viewers the uh, cool pattern that you've identified out here. Well, what it seems when I watch this pattern, let me get my sheet up here again. And I can Every, only look at it on my phone, so I need a little bit of assistance from you, maybe some of the tops that you're, that you're looking at, and then I can go ahead and draw those in for our viewers out here. So walk me, walk me through it, if you would. All right, well, you, you'll notice uh, for like the last year that this stock, every 20, 24 to 29 days has a peak, and then it comes back down. Are reason. you using, for example, um, April 27th? If I go back to the April 27, uh, 2016, there. so it gives us basically a year's worth of data. Are you using that as one of the one of the peaks, and well, then I maybe think, going? Go, I'm, go I'm ahead. Look, yeah, I'm going one year. Let's look at uh, June of last year, and then it June. goes to the next. Okay. Yeah, you know, the yep. next peak will be August. So about 24, 24 is what you're saying. About 20. <coughs> Four to 27 days, okay. <coughs> uh, the next one comes up around September, what is that, 13th, right in that area. And the next one after that is October 24th. And then there's a couple of short peaks. Every every peak, if you look at the chart online, it uh, has 36 million shares traded in, that, uh, in, the, in the, the rise of it and the fall of it. Then it drops to like 11 million shares, and that's it. And it's interesting that it's like every 24 to 29 days, this thing peaks. I cannot figure out why it's doing it every, you know, every so many days like that. Yeah. I think that this might be a good, you know, a good stack to start. You know, if you want to short a stack, when it hits that peak, it could jump in on that. Or when you see it's at the bottom, uh, buy it and work its way up. But the only thing I did notice is that last Friday they merged with somebody else. So I don't know if this pattern. Excuse me, this pattern is going to continue. But I think sure. it's very interesting that it does this. <laughs> Excuse me for coughing, too, by the way, um, huh. in your ear. So right now you're targeting somewhere in the early part of April, April 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, something like that, as a potential yeah. next topping for this stock, right? As a next topping for the stock. And then if, if it follows its pattern, if, if that, pa that pattern is going to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I would do. First of all, 
what I wouldn't do for the most part is uh, short a $7 stock. But that's neither here nor there. Um, let's just take a look at the pattern because uh, you might be able to find like something like this in, in others. But if you were, let's 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 say we're not too concerned about a uh, a $7 stock because of all okay, the upside potential. That it, stock, what, what, pattern. What's that? Huh? In case it's a $70, $70 stock with a same yeah, pattern. Exactly, exactly. So here's what I would be looking at is uh, the information, the additional information that you can utilize to make that uh, decision. And your timing out there is that uh, when on March 7th, when this did gap up with 107 million shares and then came back to the breakout area, which it did back here. On March 14th, with 40 million shares, it was coming back to where it broke out. Now it's moving back into that swing point from March the 7th, the low of which is 653. And we're at 650, uh, 665 right now. 9 million shares. There's no way it's going to have that kind of volume of 107 million shares out there. But very likely, this is going to go ahead and test 709. 709 is the exact high. That's the top of the uh, TAS daily box. It's the top of that swing point. What I would do is I would be watching for that April 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th time frame. Let it test that high, 709. If it closes back underneath it with light volume, which likely it's going to do, that could be your signal out here. Now, the reward on a trade like that is that it could very easily find support at 657. So you'd have to really do the uh, 657 to maybe 592. Comes back into that breakout area, you know, one more time out there. So that would be the reward to risk uh, scenario that you would do. But always a risky thing on a $7 stock for something that is traded, you know, as much as 25 bucks out there. Uh, because who knows what a buyout does to something like this. Um, and it certainly doesn't appear that it's going to go to zero. Um, so you've got, you know, kind of limited downside. But the pattern that you're finding out here, the, that wave of, uh, you know, uh, the cycle pattern out here, uh, mm -hmm. very, very, very cool for you to spot that for sure. And it's interesting. After every one of its uh, bottoms, there's usually a, a gap going up. Yeah, Unlike I see. Most other yeah. Stuff. yeah, no question. Well, it's certainly back on the, uh, so the one gap, that was the uh, big uh, Paul Revere uh, riding through the stock chart message came on the trading day of real. It was really November 29th when this gapped down from the November 28th session. And then the very next day, it had some volume as it gapped up to November 30th and created that island bottom out there. So it does have a very nice uh, island bottom pattern. And, uh, you know, if we put this on a weekly basis, so we just say, hey, forget about that pattern. You know, what is this equity doing out here and where is it uh, headed to? Let's uh, try to figure out where where is the problem inside of this uh, inside of this equity? Nowhere really. other. I mean, I don't see any real significant yeah. weekly basis, anything really significantly wrong with it once it clears the six. 65 area, which is what it's already done, 657, by the way. Um, you know, that's really pretty key for this chart here, Don, is uh, if we're looking at this weekly chart, and I'll turn the daily profiles off for us, because there's an important message here. Does that turn them off? Yeah. Uh, is that uh, if this week you were to get a close above that 657, it'll be the first time that uh, price has taken out the high of a weekly profile. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. when was the last time? The last time it did that was back in April of 2015. So it really would be a, it just adds to that, um, that island bottom pattern out here that that was the low and this thing wants to run higher. Whereas if it closes back below 657, it just stays in this normal consolidation pattern between 506 and 657. That's what my eyes see at least. Okay. That's about the same then. Yeah. All righty. All right. Well, thank you very much. You have a great day. Hey, you bet. And thanks so much for calling. Thanks for sending that email. That is uh, Don in uh, Dunny Eden, uh, Florida. And the ticker symbol again, WFT. That is Weatherford International. Uh, let's go back to the, to, uh, the GDX because I, I had mentioned we would take a look at the GDX. I think I tried to. So what is it that we want to see the GDX continue to at least do out here? And that one thing we want to take a look at this continuing to do is closing above Stevie's red line. That price point, by the way, 2280. We don't care how many times it gets tested. We just want to see it get rejected. 
Why do we want to see it get rejected? Because a close below that is going to turn the price oscillator, which happens to be below zero, it's going to happen to turn it down again. And that's never a good thing. Now, what does never a good thing actually translate to in dollars out here? Well, in the GDX, it's very easy because we can go back to the GDX chart. We'll go ahead and put it back on a daily time frame. And we'll go ahead and put the daily profiles back up on the screen because we'll look at those as being the levels where price would actually likely fall to. So any close in the GDX between below 2279, remember, my red line number is going to change you know, each minute or so. So you're going to have to use that as a guideline. But let's just make it very simple. A close below 2256, price probably heads to 2134 to 2155. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN. And otherwise, all is well in a sideways market for the Vanek Vector Gold Miners ETF. Steve Rhodes with TFN. And the If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market-safe core commodity CD from EverBank. This five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities, gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi-annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percent percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin, on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join Wayne David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. I love our dinners. Our wingman and wing women out here, Larry uh, writes in. He says, hey, you got to get Mucinix, that uh, plain blue pill. 
I'd be careful out there with no cough suppressants in it uh, in order to go ahead and uh, bust through my congestion and my cough out there. And, uh, you know, Larry, I have been I had been choking down those Mucinix pills till they were going out of style, actually, for over a solid week. And finally, two days ago, I just said enough, just drying me up. And uh, just as like, but I will tell you something that worked. Some folks were with me this weekend, and this came in from another dinner. Not that that doesn't work. That has worked in the past, but uh, uh, it makes it really hard to exercise when you're taking that stuff. So in any event, Zycam, one of the dinners, I apologize, I don't recall which, which dinner. There were two that they actually sent in a message about that. When you start to feel a sniffle you start or a sore throat or what have you, take that and the nasal version of that, the swab. The Schwab uh, version of that. And there's a couple people that were coming down with, I think, the same cold they took, and they're like, hey, nothing doing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Can you believe it? Gator. Oh, thank you, man. I mean, well, thank you for passing along. I have a extra now Zycam kit in my uh, cupboard out there in case I ever come down with another cold. And gosh, let's hope not. Okay, so what are we going to do out here for the last three minutes? So that's great information. I can't pass that on, on, on to enough people. Because uh, uh, it, it, it seems to be the magic injection out there. Okay, here's what we're going to take a look at. It appears that these markets want to continue to trade higher. You're going to watch inside the ES Mini 2350-650. You're right now trading at 2357 and a quarter. Looks like the NQ wants to go tag 5441. You're trading at 5427 out there. Maybe when it gets to 5441, and I say just maybe, that becomes the next potential market top, short-term top out there. But if you see a close above that, which right now, it almost looks like that's what's going to happen. Why? Because you and I looked at that Russell 2000. And this is saying that this wants to trade higher. Now, maybe the NASDAQ gets up there and it takes a break and says the Russell's going to do all the heavy lifting while it tries to make its way up into the 1383 level. But the Russell ain't no weak link out here. The only weak link happens to be inside the Dow. I say that because its um, advanced decline oscillator reading is still below zero. Not the case in the NASDAQ composite. Definitely not the case inside the New York Stock Exchange. And the, the uh, VIX index is trading out at 1119, well below 1193. Uh, these markets, they've got some juice, some orange juice, some tomato juice, some pineapple juice. They have enough juice to keep motoring to the upside out here. So watch those Watch the tops of those boxes out here. We've got, at best, at best, we've got a sideways market. With ES traveling anywhere from the 2397 to about the 2336 type level. It's really all going to be about the NQ out here. That's the tight trading range out here. It hasn't busted through. It has not given a bearish message whatsoever. Watch that uh, level of 5441. By the way, the last time that the NQ got to 5441, it was the top tick on March 21st. And that day, it went from the top of the weekly box all the way to the bottom, which was at the 5333.90 level out there. So it's all going to be about the NQ, well, and the Russell 2000. But really, it's probably all going to be about the next hour. Hey, kudos to our polar bear, David White. It looks to me like he nailed this energy sector. And that's why I didn't say anything about it during this hour, because it was not I that nailed it. It was David. So go ahead. Stay tuned for his show. It's Wonderful Wednesday. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you tomorrow. I'll try not to cough as much in your ear. But thanks so much for putting up with it. And we'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.